For my first project, I am explaining the kinematics and some of the forces of cheerleading. Just some background information, um, I've been cheering since 5th grade um, to present day in college. Um, Michigan State All-Girl Cheer has given me a home away from home and I'm pretty much obsessed with it. So when we had to think about doing a project, I was totally obsessed with just thinking about the f all the physics that goes on while I'm at practice. Um, so I'm going to be explaining how physics revolves around basket tosses today. A basket toss is a type of cheerleading stunt that is performed by two bases making kind of a crisscross platform with their hands which ultimately helps throw the flyer into the air where she can perform a variety of different tricks. So um, cheerleading versus kinematics, the flyer will always have a position of velocity and acceleration involved in her own system. Um, for me, it was kind of hard using Tracker to be able to find that because I think Tracker got confused on what was going on. But initially, she'll have negative 9.8 meters per second squared always on her. Like, that gravity will always be pulling her down. And um, there's also forces that apply, so I thought I should just add this in here. Um, force is seen in basket tosses when, like, momentum or impulse is coming into play as well. Um, so we can look at Newton's first and second law. So force law is that there's a net force required to change the objects or the flyer's speed or direction. And then the second law would be um, an object that is accelerating in a certain direction with the applied force giving a negative acceleration on it. So that would be gravity trying to slow the flyer down. <laughs> So some of the data that I got, um, it was just kind of a graph. Tracker was very confused on what I was trying to do, but you can ultimately see that she starts at zero, which is a zero position. She increases her position up the y-axis, and over time she's increasing her acceleration and her, um, her position and her velocity. Then it starts to slow down as she's in her flip, it starts to decelerate and she starts to go back towards that initial position. And basically, physics has a manipulation in cheerleading because in sports, like, we don't really think about how we get from point A to P point B. We pretty much just think, okay, like, this is how I do things. Like, it's muscle memory. Like, this happens because I practice it. But cheerleading, including stunting, tumbling, and jumping, you always start with an initial position, you always start with an initial velocity, and you always end with something different than that. There's always a displacement, and there's always a change of momentum and force, and physics can always change how high we jump or how high we throw a stunt, and it can be manipulated in cheerleading because we choose to throw harder or we jump harder when the physics changes within us.